Hey friends, it's Len down at 1A Auto. Today I'm going to be showing you a job, it's going to be super fun. We're going to be doing intake gaskets on a 2016 Ram 1500 Bighorn. Here we go. We got the hood up. We're going to come over here. We're going to, what we're going to have to do is we're going to remove this air intake system right here. So first what I like to do is remove any electrical components to make sure that we don't put any tugs on any wiring. I'll just put it down and out of the way. We're probably going to have to move it again because we're going to have to relieve pressure from here. But anyway, our next step, there's a clamp down here that holds the air intake system down to the intake right there. So I'm gonna grab my little eight millimeter. If you have access to something like this with an extension, it might be helpful. If not, you can just try to get there. Either way, you're gonna remove this clamp. We don't need to take it all the way off. We just need it to be loose enough to be able to get that air intake hose up off. You can also use a flathead screwdriver. It's all preferential. I like to use a socket. Okay, I'm gonna grab it, give it a little wiggle, comes right up. We'll take a peek inside. Just make sure that there's no dirt, debris, water, anything like that. And we wanna make sure that nothing gets in there also. So if you end up dropping a nut or a bolt, make sure that it doesn't get in there. I'm gonna grab a rag. I'm just gonna cover that real quick. And we're gonna come over here. We're gonna remove that. Some people say you don't need to cover it because the butterfly is closed anyway. You know, that's up to you. Why risk it, right? I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna grab this hose. I'm gonna try to wiggle it around, see if I can break it free. There we are. Next, I'm gonna relieve these clamps. If you have access to a small screwdriver or even a pry bar of some sort, or a screwdriver, you can go ahead and do this. Basically, we're just pulling the clamps away from the box itself. There should be one on the front, two on the side, and one on the rear. I can't see it, but I'm just gonna try to see if I can grab it. There we are. I'm gonna grab this. I'm gonna push it this way while lifting up, and I'll show you why. Under here, there's these holes. In the other part of the box, there's little male ends. Those go into this side. So that's the reason why I had to lift up and push over to slide those out. Now we can take our system, we can remove it. We can also take a peek at this sensor while we're here. We'll just make sure that the connections aren't corroded or green or any funny color that they shouldn't be. Metal's always a nice color. You can look inside, you can see what the sensor is supposed to look like in there. If it looks like it's dirty, black, gunked up, you can either replace it or clean it with a special cleaner. That's a service for another day. I'll set this aside safely. Next thing I like to do, some people won't say that you have to do this at all, but I do it. I'm gonna get this air filter right out of the way. The reason for that is because while I'm working up here, if any dirt or debris falls in this part of the air filter, well, the air filter is not gonna be filtering that because this is the side that the air comes sucked in through the air filter box, right in through here. It comes up through your air filter, all these little fins right here, they collect your dirt and debris. Anything that's on this side, well, that's just getting sucked up into your engine. Let's be safe. We'll put it out of the way. I'm gonna grab this cover. It's gonna be very simple. I'm just gonna lift up. There we are. On the rear, there's no things to lift up. That's kind of more of a pull out. So here we go. I'll show you under here. We got two rubbers. Those go onto a prong right here. And there's another prong over here. The reason why I had to pull out is because there's prongs on the backside, and those go into the backside on the engine right there, or onto the intake, I should say. So we're going to set this aside. We'll move on to the next step. Okay, so here we go. We get that removed over there. We're going to come over to the battery side, making sure that the key's in the off position, or completely out of the ignition, preferably. We're going to come over to the negative battery terminal, which is the side opposite than the red, okay? We're going to use a 10 millimeter, we're gonna turn this nut counterclockwise to remove the negative battery terminal from the battery and set it aside, making sure that it can't come free from wherever you put it and hit up against this negative. Once you start removing this, you don't wanna go off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on a whole bunch of times. Basically just take it off, get it away, keep it away. When it's time to put it back on, you might feel a little bit, or you might see and hear a little bit of an arc. Don't get worried and take it back off and then try to go again. Put it right on, okay? Now we're gonna be very careful, making sure that this is the positive's completely covered. You don't wanna touch anything 
like from the negative to the positive. If you're using some sort of extension with a long ratchet or whatever you've got, and you bring this down and you touch the positive, well, you're gonna arc it out. You're probably gonna weld the two, all the pieces together, maybe even get a little zap. So I'm gonna get my... The reason why I'm removing the negative and not the positive, let me just get this off of here real quick, and I'll continue that. There we go. I'm gonna set this right aside. <clears throat> Excuse me. The reason why I remove the negative and not the positive is because if I was removing the positive and I happen to touch my ratchet onto here if it was longer, well then we're gonna do the same thing as basically touching from here to here, right? I'm gonna go like this. I might touch it to a ground of some sort and which is gonna cause an arc, uh, possibly blow a fuse, mess up your electrical system. We don't want any of that. Let's just be safe. We're gonna go with the negative. Now there's no juice going to the truck. So you can go in and try to turn on your radio. You can do whatever you want. Sorry, your music's not gonna work. You disconnected the battery. So here we go. We're gonna move on to the next step. So next we're gonna take the serpentine belt off. It's this right here, a little rubber. You wanna pay attention to the way that it's in here. If you have a cell phone, uh, you can snap a picture of it or you can draw it if you're an artist, that's fine too. Or even just look at this video a couple times and I'm sure it'll show you how to do it. So here we go. I'm gonna try to put this little tool right here, which is basically just the same as a 3 8 ratchet. You can either use this tool or you can use a 3 8 ratchet. Since I paid money for the tool, I'm gonna go ahead and try that. There's a little spot down inside the tensioner that this slides right into. Let me get this geared up. Now I can relieve pressure from the tensioner. I can grab this serpentine belt I'm gonna just pull it down off the alternator pulley. Now I'm gonna carefully relieve pressure of the tool so it doesn't come slapping up and slam my hands into anything. You wanna be careful not to get into a pinch point. I'm gonna try to remove the tool. Notice my little piece is stuck in there, that's okay. Just gonna get mad about it and see if I can break it free. I can even try to bonk it with my tool. It'll just fall and hit the ground, I'm sure, which is okay. I gotta hit it. <laughs> get that out of the way. I don't want to lose it. Nice. All right. So now we're going to take the serpentine belt off. I'm going to come around this way. Basically, I'm just removing it from all the pulleys as much as I can see from this angle. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move my stool so I can get to the rest of it. Okay, let's see. All right. So now what's holding us on? is the fan clutch. This might be a little bit difficult for some people to deal with, but all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this serpentine belt, I'm gonna push it in up behind the uh, fan that's up inside here, being very careful. It's just plastic, so it shouldn't cut me, but there could be sharp edges. Yours might be metal. If you have any sharp edges, just please be very careful. Safety first. I'm just gonna take it, I'm gonna try to put it up and over the fan, just like this, while my hands are in there. I'm gonna carefully spin the fan, which will walk the belt down and around. And I'm gonna see if I can pull it. Let's see if this worked. I'm gonna pull gently, of course. Now we've removed our serpentine belt. Okay, so now we're gonna remove the alternator. Make sure our rag's still on there, can get moved around. There's a little plastic cover right here. Push that down and out of the way, okay? This shows us this nut right here. We have the battery disconnected, so we don't have to worry about touching this on anything. We're gonna use a 13 millimeter wrench, or if you have access to a half inch, that would work as well. We're gonna turn it to the left. Since I'm working from the front, and generally speaking, if I was taking it off, I would be coming from the other side here, I'm gonna be working in reverse. So I'm gonna be turning to the right. If you're like, Len said left, but he's turning right. Well, that's because I'm working from the other side. Gonna loosen it up. We're gonna remove this nut. That's what it looks like. Very nice. Put it someplace where I can find it. I'm gonna remove this cable from the back of the alternator. Set it aside. The battery is disconnected, so you don't have to worry about it arcing out. I'm gonna take my small pocket screwdriver. There's a little red clip right here. This is a lock for this. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick it in. Slide that just like that. It was very simple. I just separated it and pushed it. Now there's a little push button right here. 
I'm going to show you with this screwdriver right there. You can use your thumb, you can use a small screwdriver, whatever you've got. I'm going to hold on to the assembly or the little connector. I'm just going to use my small screwdriver. I'm going to try to push it in, wiggle this around. Now that I've got this disconnected, I'm going to look inside, look for any funny colors. When it comes to vehicles like this, you don't want to have any rainbow colors. So just look for the metal color, okay? We'll set that aside so it can't get crushed or broken. Feel around. I don't feel any other connectors back there, so that's nice. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to remove our two mounting bolts for the alternator. To do that, we're going to be using a 15 millimeter socket and I'm going to be using a 3 8 drive wrench, uh, ratchet, sorry. I'm just going to go ahead and turn it to the left. Yep, that feels good. Nice and loose. I'm going to try to come over here, put it on the second one, it's hiding. Okay, a little hide and seek. It's a fun game. Everybody played it, hopefully. There we go. I got that loose enough. Now if we want, we can try to grab these by hand, continuing to turn to the left, counterclockwise. I'm gonna remove that one bolt. There we are. Set that aside. This one's gonna be a little bit harder for me to grab onto with my hands. Let's see if I can weasel my hand in there and grab it. Yeah, looks like I can. Apparently I'm a little bit of a contortionist, so that's kinda neat. I guess you kind of have to be to work on cars. There we are. There's the second bolt. If we want, we can compare them. They're both the same, so which one's which? Who cares? There we go. We can try to wiggle this. You're going to notice it's stuck. I'll show you why. Right over here, there's a little crush washer, essentially. So. When we're putting this back in, what we're gonna do is this piece right here that's kind of almost rusty looking, we're gonna try to push this into the alternator a little further and out this direction. And that's so this falls in nice and easy. Then once we tighten this up, it's gonna slide this piece back through the alternator and right up against here. So for right now, what we're actually gonna do is I'm gonna grab a small pry bar, or if you have a screwdriver, not this, <laughs> something a little bigger and heftier because I could probably bend this with my hand. I'm gonna go right here I'm going to try to pry it up, see if I can wiggle this alternator, lift it up and out, being very careful not to cut any of these lines right here. These are very important. So I'm going to grab that pry bar and we'll move along. So I got my pry bar, all right? I could probably go with a longer one if I want to, but let's just go with the size that we need. I'm going to come under here, up against the uh, alternator, and this is the alternator bracket. This is part of the engine, really. It kind of just mounts on. But anyways, it's strong enough to pry against. Here we go, it's lifting up fairly easily. Okay, that's as high up as it wants to go at that point. We could try to grab it, wiggle it, shake it, pull it out. If it doesn't come out, we'll have to stick our pry bar down in between here, but let's try this first. I'm gonna be very careful of any pinch points. I'm not gonna grab right here, where my, this is gonna move up and down and pinch me. Safety first. I'm gonna see if I can wiggle it. If it doesn't wanna wiggle, like I said, we'll just pry it. trying. Here we go. Come on, baby. Oh yeah. I love it. And now we've removed our alternator. Now we're going to move on to the next step. What it's going to be, a little bit of compressed air if you have access to it, or you can use a little broom. Essentially what I want to do is make sure I'm wearing my safety glasses, gloves obviously, and I'm going to take a little bit of compressed air and I'm going to blow along the top of my engine. The reason for that is, as you can tell, well, looks like there's a mouse in the house. While the cat's away, the mice are going to play, aren't they? All this. Anyway, we want to get this out of here because once we start getting everything apart, there's going to be openings going into the engine. We want to make sure that no debris can get inside. So let's get as much of this out of here as possible. If you haven't covered this yet, right, cover it please. If you haven't removed your air filter because you're like, I don't want to do that extra step line, remove it please. Here we go. Safety glasses on. Use a little bit of air. I'm just going to come all the way around. I'm not in too much of a rush, so I can spend as much time as I want. I just want to make sure that everything's removed from the top that could fall down into the engine. Anything that falls into the engine could potentially cause engine failure, and then we're kind of wasting our time doing all this. So let's keep moving. We get it all blown off. We've got this right here that's going to be in the way to lift it up.
So all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab it and see if I can slide it out of this little tube that it's hanging out in. Here we are. You can tell there's two different ends. We can't mix that up, right? All we want to remember is that when we put it in, it goes this direction and not, I don't know, like this, like a snorkel. It's not a snorkel, okay guys? Put it aside. So here we go. Now we're going to disconnect the, elect the um, fuel injectors. All right, to do that, I'm going to lift up on this little red tab using my small screwdriver. If it doesn't want to pull up easy, just kind of work it. It's got to come up, so you're going to have to do it. You can cry about it if you want, but it's going to get done. Next, what I'm going to do, I'm going to find this little push clip right here, which is underneath that red thing. Right here, okay? You're going to want to just push it in. Once you push it in, just hold your wires, give them a nice tug and twist. Each one that you pull off, you're going to always look inside, make sure there's no funny colors, okay? Pretty much every electrical connector, just do it, okay? We're going to do the same for all four, going down the line. We're going to go over to the other side of the engine, do the four on the other side, and we'll move on to the next step. So here we go. We're on the driver's side now. There's a couple things in the way. We're going to have to remove this anyway, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this hose, Try to twist it, see if I can break it free from the brake booster. If I can't, I can try to use my small screwdriver once again. This tool is so handy. I'm just gonna try to pry. If you need to use a little bit of penetrant, you could do that. Basically, all I'm trying to do is just separate this hose from the sensor. If I can't do that, well, then I'll come to the engine side. <clears throat> Let's see, come on. There we are, check the condition. If you see any tears, rips, cracks, just go ahead and order this part right here. You need this, this is vacuum. It goes from your intake, creates vacuum, going to your vacuum booster for your braking system. Super important. So if this is in poor condition, just replace it, okay? Now that that's out of the way, we're gonna come over. We're looking for our fuel injectors. Let's get back on track. So here's our fuel injector. That's gonna be a little hard to get to, isn't it? Well. The good thing is, is they make these fuel injectors so they can pivot a little bit. So there we are. I can get a little bit better of a view. Let's see if I can come in somehow and try to get under that red. I'm gonna try to carefully lift it. I say carefully. There we are. I remember doing the other side. I remember the little push is right underneath that red. I'm gonna pull, nice. I'm just gonna come down the line, do the other three, and we'll move along to the next step. Okay, we're on the last one. I'm just lifting up on that clip. Squeeze this with my fingers. There we are. Looks good. So we've got all the fuel injectors disconnected. We can try to push those wires back and out of the way. Do the same on the other side after we do this. I'm gonna grab this right here. I feel where it feels like it goes. It doesn't feel like that has to be disconnected, but we do have to get it unplugged from the, uh, from the intake. So if you wanna just lift it, it should come right up. And we'll just slide that out of the way, just like that. So that's gonna be clear now. Got this hose. We want to make sure that we get this up and out of the way. There's a little connector here. All it does is just slide over that. It's easy. Sorry. It's quick. It's quick about it. I'm gonna see if I can remove this right here without trying to break an ear off of the intake. If it doesn't come off with the pocket screwdriver, we'll just grab another tool. We'll come back to that in a second. Well, I'm still up here. Just gonna go ahead and go this way. I'm gonna take a look at this connector. This is what it looks like. I can twist it. Okay, let's see how this puppy works. It's so gonna go like that. So, I'm gonna go like that. Get that up and out of the way. Okay. Now there's two prongs. There's one right here, one up there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to squeeze those in and then back. So it's gonna basically come out the back side here, okay? So I'm gonna go in, see if 
if I can get it pushed back with just one, the next one. I'm gonna try to use this pocket screwdriver and I'm gonna do the same thing. There we are, okay. So that just took the lock off this fuel line right here. Now when we pull on this, there's gonna be fuel that comes out. So we're making sure that we're wearing our safety glasses, we're wearing our gloves. We're just gonna give it a little pull. Yeah, see, fuel came out, sprayed all over the place. I'm wearing safety glasses, I'm safe. My beard's gonna smell a little bit like fuel later, that's okay. I'm a grease monkey. So there we go. We'll come over to the top up here. There's another electrical connector. This one all I'm gonna do is there's a little prong right here in the center, okay? I'm gonna squeeze it with my thumb. I'm gonna give this a little wiggle. I can even give it a little push, help it along. That's out of the way. We'll just check this. This comes over, connects back into where the intake is so we don't have to remove this. This comes up and over the intake, but it's part of the fuel rail. The fuel rail is all mounted to the intake, so we don't have to remove any of those, so that's nice. Get all our little wires out of the way. I'm just gonna tuck them underneath in between the wiring harness and the valve cover. This is the valve cover, by the way. I'm just gonna see about trying to remove this one. It's gonna be a little bit hard for you to see. Hard for me to see, too, because I'm trying to show you. But there's a little push pin right here. There's gonna be one over there. Basically, we're gonna squeeze those together. I'm gonna try to lift this up. There we are, that's the lock. It's kinda of like that one over there. A Little different, but same general idea. Slide it right up and out of the way. Okay. We've got another one of those little hook clamps. Just a little C, just slides over, goes over the hose. We've already established how that works, it's pretty easy gonna keep moving the rag around we're gonna keep covering it back up as much as possible it's okay if it comes off and you're whatever we'll just make sure it's cleaned up before we put it back together okay so we've got this off we've got wiring that comes up to here we've got this hose so what we'll do let's see I'm gonna see how this little clip comes off real quick. I feel like if I just give myself a little bit of slack with the wiring, squeeze on this. Okay. Let's see. This one's a fighter. It's okay. All right. All I did because I had a hard time squeezing on this to get it to lift up just because of the angle. Maybe you can do it and that's cool. But basically you squeeze, it lifts up this little flap right here and that's the lock for it, okay? If you can't, just come in from the backside like I did. Try to weasel yourself in, in between the uh, this side of it and the connector and then just twist and pull, okay? We've got an electrical connector, what do we always do? We check it, no funny colors, looks good. Nice, we are cranking. We just need our little fork tool here, fork tool there. We'll move on to the next step. We've got our little forky tool. You can use whatever you've got. This is what I have and I like to use it. Pay good money for it. I'm just gonna... As you can tell, it's a little hard to take out and that's just because of all these little teeth right here. So it's just gonna wanna fight with you. you just keep trying. Um, you might want to just break it off. Don't because you need this to try to go back together so it can be secured. So just deal with it, fight with it, and win that battle, okay? Here we are. So we still got plenty of good teeth on there, so when we go to put it back together, just gonna push right in. I'm not gonna do it now because then I'm gonna be fighting again. I'm gonna move on to this side and do the same thing. Just try to pry it out of there. Nice. Okay, we'll just set this aside so we don't lose it. We have to make sure everything we take off, we remember where it goes back in, okay? It's gonna be hard to remember. We can do it. We're a team, you and me. All right, let's get down. So next here. what we're gonna do, we're gonna remove this nut right here. It's a 13 millimeter head. So I'm gonna use a long 13 millimeter socket, six point, with my ratchet. I'm turning to the left, obviously. I'm just gonna remove that nut. 
Come on, baby. Getting close. There it is. I'll put it aside where I can find it. Now we're gonna start removing our intake bolts. So here we go. Now we're gonna remove our intake, it's plastic, so we have to go in a specific order, okay? To remove it, we're gonna start in the center here. We're gonna go number one, which would be in front of this, okay? Number two is behind it. Number three is actually this one right here. Number four would be the one that's closest to the one we just took out originally, the, fir the first one. So this is number four. Number five, we're gonna jump over here. Number six would be, let's see if I can find it. It would be essentially the one that's the next one down. So I believe it's right about here. I can't see it from this view, but it should be right behind here, okay? Seven, the far forward, um, I guess, passenger side. Far forward, driver's side. Then we're gonna go far rear, driver's side, that's number nine. Ending with number 10, all the way in the back, far rear, passenger side, okay? It's up to you if you wanna go in that order. It's recommended to go that way because it is a plastic intake. Installing it, you need to go in order. Deinstallation, you should go in order. I'm not gonna say not to. You do you, boo-boo. But we're gonna go in order, okay? So I'm gonna start with number one. I'm gonna grab my tool and we'll do it. go number 10 that should do it come on baby oh yeah there we are Ooh, a little moisture back there it makes me like fuel looks like oil to me so we obviously have some kind of oil getting in from up there we'll check that out once we get this up now when I was removing these some of the bolts didn't want to come out fully and instead of risking cracking the intake manifold, I'm just gonna take the risk of lifting up with them still in the manifold. You wanna make sure you pay special attention to the fact that they stay in there and they don't come falling off into the engine and down into any of the ports. We don't want anything to fall into these ports, okay guys? So just please pay attention. I'm gonna see if I can grab this and wiggle it. Okay, that's coming loose. Feels like maybe something might still be holding up in the front here. So I'm gonna take a look and I know exactly what it is. I'm gonna get down. Pardon my crying, because oh, there we go. Look at this. We still have our AC lines attached to this bracket. So even though I'm lifting up on the intake, they're kind of getting held. And we have the bracket right here. Okay. So once we disconnect this. We're gonna try to lift up on the intake, slide this out. If that doesn't work, we can go ahead and unattach the bracket itself from the intake area, but hopefully we don't have to. So let's try without doing that. I'm just gonna try to get in here. I'm gonna see what's holding it on. Okay. All right, I'm gonna grab my small screwdriver. Go like this, okay. There we are. Try to pull these out of there. These are your air conditioning lines. So you wanna make sure that you don't mess around too much with these. You don't wanna shake them around too, too much, okay? If you take this cap off, you know, underneath there, there's a little uh, valve stem. We don't need to worry about that. That's not for us for today. But basically, you wanna make sure that you don't move these around too much and shake anything free. This is under pressure, all right? Wear your safety glasses just in case, God forbid something bad happens, because we are moving things around here. I'm gonna grab this bracket. I'm gonna try to pull it off this stud. I'm gonna do it by hand, hopefully. There we are. Moves fairly easily, so that's nice. Okay, feels like our intake's ready to come up. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna climb up. I'm gonna see if I can lift it up and out, and then hopefully there'll be somebody there to catch it on the way out. So here we go. Moment of truth, everybody. We're hoping that we disconnected all of our wiring Okay, when I'm up in here, I'm making sure that wherever my feet are, I'm gonna have to use them to you know, secure myself while I'm lifting. So I wanna make sure I'm not stepping on, stepping on anything that's electrical or fragile or anything like that. So I found some pretty good spots to put my feet. 
I'm gonna grab this. I'm gonna try to come straight up a little bit. I'm gonna get this line out of the way. Okay, right here. I'm gonna see if I can, I don't know, I'll put it over here. Wherever, under my leg, I don't know. I don't know, we'll see. Whatever, here we go. I'm coming up, I'm paying attention to anything that's electrical. Sometimes you'll get a wire like this one, it's hanging on, doing a little fishing. It wants to stay, but I said it's time to go. So we're gonna have to take a look. Looks like we got a couple things that are hanging on still. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out this one bolt right here, right there. And then I'm gonna disconnect this right here and hopefully get all this wiring right out of the way, okay? All right, so here we go. Let's take this off right here. And that just makes it so when we get this bracket down, we can slide it out in between here and right out of the way, okay? Now I'm gonna come over here. We can see when we lift, we're getting a little tug on this wire right here, okay? That goes down to the ECT sensor. So I'm gonna remove the lock which basically is just lifting it up like that. Right in the center, like always, there's a little prong you push in. Slide it right up. Electrical tech connectors. We like to make sure that they're nice and clean, right? I keep saying it over and over and over and over. That's how I was taught, so that's how I'm gonna teach you. Now we're gonna remove this bull head right here. It's a 13 millimeter. You can do it while it's down low, or you can do it while it's up high, whatever you want to do. This way is easier for me, so I'm not bending over too much. There's our bolt, okay? Set it aside. We've got our little bracket, okay? It's almost ready to come out. We just need this one right here. Use our handy screwdriver again. There we are. Okay. Take a look. I'm gonna use the same screwdriver. I'm gonna come under here, lift up on that. I'm gonna hold up the intake with one hand. Pull this out. I don't need to say it right, we're just looking. Okay, looks good. We're gonna take this, set it over and out of our way. So here's our holes, okay? These could be considered the holes of doom if you drop anything inside there. You're gonna be wishing you hadn't, so let's not, all right? Let's see what we can do about getting this puppy up. Okay, it feels like maybe we have one more thing, maybe somewhere in the back holding us. I'm looking at that wiring harness back there. It looks like maybe there's a clip holding it in. So we're gonna have to see about getting back there, okay? Just may pay attention, nothing gets in here, okay? I'm gonna say it again. You don't wanna buy yourself an engine. All right. So right here's where the wiring harness is connected to it, okay? I'm just gonna take my little fork and see if I can find it. I'm shooting blind here. Let's see if I can push it off. Grab it with my hand. Ugh. Here we are, that came free. Okay, I'm just gonna feel around now. Okay, I got my little tool under here. I'm just gonna try to lift that up and out of the intake. It's just a plastic intake, okay? So we wanna be careful. If you can't get it up and out, well, you're gonna have to make a decision on what you're gonna do. I'm just gonna try my darndest here for the purpose of this video, but you know, there's always a plan B, and that's your prerogative. Okay, looks like it's almost up. So. So close. So, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna try to tap this and work it out. There we go, it's lifting. Nice. Let's see if I can feel, is there a sensor? Feels like a sensor of some sort. I'm just gonna wing it. Can't see anything.
Okay. Let's see if I can push in. There must be a push clip here. I'm going blind. I wish I had my mirror. I don't. Where is it? Oh, I think I feel it. I'm gonna go right about here, I hope. Come on, baby. There, there. <laughs> so there's the red lock. We're gonna wanna grab onto that. We're gonna push it downward. That should move it out of the way, and then we can squeeze. All right, don't mind the cracked mirror. It's because I looked at it earlier, and well, you've seen me. So I got my little pocket screwdriver here, and I apologize about a three hour long video. I'm really trying here. Working in a mirror is not the funnest. What I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to unlock this, which should be fairly basic, just pushing down that red. So I'm gonna see if I got it down far enough to unlock that. Now I'm gonna try to squeeze it in and pull the connector down. At least that's my plan. So I'm gonna grab it. Doesn't feel like Here we are, friends. This is our nightmare. Something this small and little. Now you don't want this to fall inside that intake, okay? Right down into your engine. So I'm just gonna put it someplace like the trash where I won't have to look at it again. Just kidding, I'm gonna put it up with the rest of my stuff and I'll seriously think about if I wanna put it back in. I might not, I might just super glue the stupid thing. But now, hopefully, there's a spot that I can squeeze on this thing. I know we keep saying round one, round two, round three, round four. I don't know what round we're on anymore. So let's just do it. Let's just do it. Abracadabra, man. Oh my God. Here we go. Oh, okay. I'm waiting for the applaud, everybody. All right. Hey everybody, it's allergy season. I got my tissues. I'm coming under here. We got our intake off. We want to take a look. Look at this mess. This is ridiculous. Somebody lives here rent free. I don't know. We're not going to deal with that. We're not going to take it, okay? What we want to do is make sure all these holes are plugged up. I'm going to use something as simple as a rag. And I'm going to make sure that it's something that whatever it is that I use is something that I can grab in case it goes too far in. I'll be able to grab it and pull it right back out. Okay, anything we put in needs to come right back out. You wanna make sure that no dirt, debris, acorns, whatever might be under there, you can call them what you want. I don't know if it's an acorn to you, but it's an acorn to me. Maybe you call it a bee corn or a sea corn or who knows. You can get these in there, okay? I'm gonna do all these holes the same. And then I'm gonna take something as simple as a vacuum cleaner. I'm gonna clean up somebody else's mess and I'm used to doing that. I got kids, all right? I'm just gonna vacuum it all up once I get these all plugged up. And then we'll be all set to move along. All right, Winston, let's crank this baby up. Here we go. Get all our rags in there. Woo -hoo -hoo. That looks pretty great. We'll do it again in a minute. Okay, so now we can take this a couple different ways. We can go ahead with a razor blade. We can clean up all this and then clean it again with a rag once we get off the majority of this crud, okay? Or we can skip right ahead and get to the task at hand of replacing our part. So we'll get down, we'll make a choice, and we'll go from there, all right? So we've got our intake. We worked hard at taking it out. Now we want to work hard at making sure it goes back in properly. So go ahead and replace these gaskets. If you have access to them, you got a little bit extra cake, it's super important. Some people will say, well, then I'm just gonna clean these up. They look fine. Yeah, maybe they look fine, but maybe they're dry, maybe they're brittle, maybe they're cracked and you just don't know. Then you're gonna be doing this all over again. So you can watch my video again, that would be nice. Make sure you like it again too. So I'm gonna grab the gasket. Pull it out of here, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing, all eight of these. You'll notice that there's two other gaskets. There's one here, little wonky looking one. It's kind of cute. This one right here, same thing, okay? 
So we're going to take all these gaskets out. And then we're going to go ahead, we're going to take another rag, or whatever you have access to, with a little bit of parts cleaner. We're going to try to come up in here and just get off some of this crud, okay? We don't want to spray stuff directly into here. Maybe you do want to, but you don't want to. Just spray it on the rag, try not to breathe in the vapors, like I said before, and then just give it a little, spray, a little uh, scrub, okay? This is why, I'll just show you real quick. It gets worse when you actually use some parts cleaner, you'll see. So here we go. I got one, I'm just gonna go around, I'm gonna do them all, all right? And we got our little kit right here with a whole bunch of new ones. These are nice and pretty, they're not hard. Puppy out of there. So we got all our gaskets. We can dispose of those properly, right? I'm gonna make sure that they're disposed of properly. We're gonna take a little bit of our parts cleaner. We're wearing our safety glasses. We don't want to go like this up close to our face. Spray it. It comes back. Hits us in the face. Protect your eyes. Protect your hands. The stuff getting into your skin is no good. Getting into your eyes, really no good. Okay. Here we go. Just gonna spray some on there directly. Let's see about cleaning out some of this crud in here. Getting pretty nasty. Whew. Oh yeah. Boy oh boy. Turn the rag around here in a second. I think all I'm doing is spreading the goodness. Okay, so I used my nice clean white rag and I cleaned out all these, all right, as good as I could. You know, I could have probably done a little better. People might look at it and be like, you missed a spot. You know what? It is what it is. I tried, okay? So I got all the gaskets out. I cleaned inside as good as I could. I'm looking at all the fuel injectors, making sure that none of the holes look like they're plugged up. If it looks like they're plugged up or they're black or anything like that, now would be the time to replace these. I mean, it really wouldn't be too hard. We've got it all out. You could do it while it's still in the vehicle. That would be okay too, but we're here. I looked at them. They look fine. Next, what I want to do is I want to take my razor blade, okay? I'm going to go along here, keeping it flat, okay? Just like this. The reason why I'm doing this is to make sure that there isn't anything that's stuck on the outsides that aren't on the inside that I just cleaned out. If there's like any big mounds of anything on the outside, that might keep this from sitting flush. So even though I got my nice beautiful new gaskets in there and I just spent you know a little bit of money on them and I wanna make sure I did it right, right? If I have something that's sticking up in between here and the engine, it's gonna hold it up in a way and this won't make a proper seal. So might as well just throw it in the trash, you know? So we're just gonna take our razor blade, we'll spend another minute. We'll I'm go like this. You don't need to press hard. You definitely don't need to go like this, like you're trying to, for, like you're trying to uh, cut into it. We don't wanna cut into it, we just wanna skim across the top. Get off anything that might be there that isn't supposed to be there. So we'll just do this to all eight of these. So here's the part that we're gonna start installing all of our rubber gaskets. We've got two of these. They're both pretty much the same. You can see that they're, if you turn them, they're maybe a little bit different, but they're generally the same. You can see the way they are. One side's a little bit bigger, and then the other side's smaller. One side's a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. So we just wanna look at these we're gonna find the side that looks like it's a little bit bigger and a little bit smaller and work at it that way. I mean, they might look pretty even to you and who knows, maybe they are actually pretty even. It might just be an optical illusion from where I'm sitting. But I'm just gonna see if it fits. Nice. Go down here, see if this one fits. Also nice, okay. So now we're left with all these. Where do they go? Well, you know where they go. They go right along here, okay? We're just gonna push these in. 
They have these little kind of bump outs on them. That's essentially just to kind of hold them. If you wanted to, you could try putting a little bit of silicone around these just to kind of lube them up. It's really up to you. It's preferential. Do you need to? I would say no. If you want to, I'm also not going to tell you no because you do you, boo boo. What could happen if you don't have them all the way pressed in, let's say you go kind of like that, right? And you got a little flippy do kind of just hanging out and it's not in. I don't know. It looks like it's in, but it's not. I'm moving along. I'm not paying attention. I'm in a rush. It's getting cold outside and dark. I grab this. I go put it up on the engine, right? Let's say somehow this thing even just stayed in like it is, but I go to put it on the engine and it goes like this. Or it goes like this. Or it goes anywhere, but not where it's supposed to go. You can imagine what's gonna happen. We're gonna suck air, dirty air, straight into the engine. You won't even probably get to that point because as soon as you start it up, your check engine light's gonna turn on. You're gonna have a misfire like crazy and the thing's probably just gonna be spitting and sputtering and you're gonna be crying because you're gonna take this all back apart again. So now that we got them all in, we'll just go make sure that we haven't missed anything. We're just gonna press all these in, make sure that they look good. They're not twisted, bent, ripped, missing. Inside your scrap pile, See, that one kind of felt like it was coming out a little bit. So now we can go ahead, if you have access to a razor blade, something along this line, so you can call it whatever you want. Basically what you're gonna do is making sure that you have our rags still in here so we can catch whatever we can. We're just gonna go like this. I'll show you what the razor blade looks like in one second. And you'll see the reason why we did this. Look at that, nasty, right? So if we didn't clean these up, and we left all this crud on there. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put our intake with our brand new gaskets onto this, right? With all this crud right along where the gaskets are supposed to ride. And you have to ask yourself how good of a seal it's gonna make. Well, I'll just answer it for you. It's not gonna make a very good seal at all, okay? That's just basic. So we're gonna do that to all of these. We're gonna go around one, two, three, four, all the way around. It's gonna take a little bit of time. You can take your time on it. You do want it to be clean. After you get the majority of this crud off, you're gonna keep those in, okay? Grab another rag, use a little bit of parts cleaner, whatever you have, put it directly on the rag. Make sure you don't inhale the vapors from it. It's very toxic, I'm sure. Doesn't matter what kind you get, I'm sure it's toxic. And then you're just gonna take it and you're gonna go around all these again. Get it as clean as you can, okay everybody? We wanna make sure these are clean. We need a proper seal. If you have a little bit of a leak here, you're gonna have air getting sucked into your engine that's not getting metered, it's not getting filtered, it's just gonna be bad, all right? We want a good seal, so let's do this right, everybody, okay? Here we go. Okay, so I did the whole razor blade thing. Went around everywhere. I made quite a mess of all the little flakies and gunk drops. So now I got my vacuum out again. I'm just gonna try to clean up my mess that I made. I'm like that, if I make a mess, I like to try to clean it up. So here we go. Alright friends, I got this all cleaned up, I vacuumed it up, I tried to pick up as much of my mess as possible. I'm going to take a clean rag, I'm going to use a little bit of parts cleaner, I'm going to put the parts cleaner directly on the rag, and I'm going to clean up all the metal areas. I can even try to get a little bit inside here, you know, try to get up some of this crud that's down inside there with the parts cleaner. Um, I'm not going to be talking at all while I'm doing this because I want to try to inhale 
the least amount of these vapors as possible. So essentially, more than likely, I'm gonna be holding my breath, breath through the most of it. So here we go. Now we're gonna take out our rags. Actually, let's leave those in for one more second. We'll just move these harnesses out of the way. Make sure that everything is very clear of where the intake's gonna be sitting down, okay? We don't wanna crush anything. When we're putting this intake down, there can be nothing between those gaskets slash the intake and this engine block, okay? So this looks pretty good. I got, just move these a little bit further, just for safety's sake. I don't wanna buy a wiring harness just to show you guys how to do this. There we go. Very nice. Okay, so we'll start taking out our rags. I'm gonna start the farthest one away. I'm gonna work my way this way only because once I open this one and then this one, as I go, I'm gonna be flinging stuff out of these, right? So as I'm flinging stuff out, I don't want it coming back over here. So I'm gonna go like this and try to pull it up and out. Okay, I'll just go right in the middle if I want, or I can throw it on the recycling bin, whatever you might have around. As we're pulling them up, we want to be checking to make sure that we're not flicking anything up onto here. Any little bit of dirt that we just pulled up, we're going to need to make sure that it comes up and away from where the seals are going to ride. Ooh. There we go. Those look good still. We can just grab a rag and we'll clean those up in a second. Well, that one's a messy one. These rags are still fairly clean. I would go ahead and reuse these again. So I'll just set them aside. And use one of my rags that I just pulled out. I'm just gonna clean up the mess that we made if we wanted to. We could take a peek down inside and look at where our valves are. This is kind of neat to look at, really. I don't know if you're interested in that type of stuff or not, but you can see the valves, right? You can see down inside there. Basically, that's where your fuel and air mixture is gonna go down into. It's gonna get dropped down into the cylinder and your cylinder goes bang. Now, well, that valve's gonna do its job, isn't it? It's gonna go up and down. If it looks like it's very dirty, or it has some kind of liquid in there, or a lot of debris, you're gonna to wanna to try to clean it out. Let's say maybe you dropped a bolt in there somehow. Well, you're gonna to wanna to get that out of there, okay? Very important, so just take a peek in all of them. If you see a little bit of dirt or something like that, you know, use your discretion. It might not be too big of a deal if there's a couple little flakes. This one right here looks like it has more than a couple. You could do that if you're wearing safety glasses or use your compressed air. If you wanted to do some sort of valve cleaning, you could probably do it at this point. This one right here, if it was mine, I might do something with it. But for the purpose of this video, I'm not gonna worry about it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and grab the intake. I'm gonna carefully bring it over here, making sure all those gaskets are safely installed onto the intake. I'm gonna look at this again. Just make sure I get all the dirt off of here, all right? I just blew into that and it just kind of made a mess everywhere. So, just pay special attention to everything here. Details, details. This is such an integral part. You wanna make sure that you have plenty of safe vacuum there. I'm gonna look inside, look inside. Oh, that one's nice and open, nice. Yeah, so let's grab the intake, we'll move along. All right, so here we go. We have our intake. Just 
gonna get it up here. Now what I'm gonna need to do is I'm gonna need to hold it up, try to get it over these AC lines, bring it down. I wanna be very careful of any lines, gaskets especially. We wanna pay special attention, make sure when we were carrying this, we did not drop any of these gaskets. If you dropped any, you can look behind you. I got nothing, I'm doing all right, cool. So now that I got it up to this point, I'm gonna climb up and I'm hopefully I'm gonna be able to lift this, finagle it into where it goes, and then we're gonna start by tightening up these bolts just slightly to get it down. We'll go from there. So here we go, friends. I'm up in here again. I'm gonna try to grab this. I'm gonna try to just lift it up and try to do as minimal dragging as possible. I don't wanna disturb those gaskets that I just spent all that wonderful time that I'll never get back installing. So I'm gonna get this down. All right. Okay. Now once we get it down so it seems like it's about where it's supposed to go, we're gonna wanna take our flashlight. There we go, that's closer. Perfect. I'm gonna grab my flashlight. I'm just gonna take a peek around as much of this as I can see, just to make sure that maybe this wire came loose and went underneath that intake. And I've got it pinched right here, or even up on there. I just wanna make sure that there's nothing underneath there. This is very important. We need to make a good seal. Just take your time, do it right the first time. This side looks great. This actually looks really good. Okay, so now we can just go ahead and start the bolts in. When we tighten these, we need to go in a very specific order and I'll go over that with you in a second. All I'm doing is I'm getting these started in. Basically, I wanna just line up the holes, okay? If you wanna get them bottomed out, you can, but I would not bottom them out even to that point. I would just get them all started in first and we'll go from there, okay everybody? So now we got all these started in. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and bottom them out. We're not gonna tighten them in any way. We're just gonna get it bottomed out. We're gonna go in the original sequence that I showed you before. All right, the same for removing it. We're gonna go here, number one, which is right in front of here. Number two, okay. Number three. Number four, which would be the next one back, yeah, right here, which is pretty much next to the oil filter, I mean oil inlet. Um, let's see, number five would be up here. Number six would be this one right here. We're gonna move back down over here now to the far forward one. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay? So all we're gonna do is just bottom them out and then we're gonna torque them down. So don't go grabbing onto it and give it like a, I wanna turn it, right? Okay? Just get it until your ratchet stops and that's it. And then we're gonna torque them. So here we go. Okay, friends, we got our torque wrench out. We've got our eight millimeter socket extension. We're gonna go to nine foot pounds or 12 Newton meters. Whatever your torque wrench is able to do, go with that. You don't wanna go more than that. This is a plastic intake. You crank it down to 100 foot pounds, well, you're taking it into your own hands, right? Just going nine. That's what the manufacturer recommends. That's what their robots or whatever they used to put it together used. there. There's nine. That's number one. We're going to continue in our specific order. Sequence. Get number two over here. I guess I could have probably bottomed this one out a little bit more, but that's okay. Nine. Okay, four. Okay, we're gonna go up 
to number five, which is up here on the other side of this. Essentially, we're going from the center, working our way out, right? Five. Number six is back here. Let's see if we can find it. I'm grab my flashlight, which is minimal help. It's probably dying at this point. It's okay. Um, yeah, I can see it. It's right down in here. I might need to change up my extension, but we're gonna see if we can get it to work. Nice. I'm turning these to the right. Go to number seven, which is the far forward passenger side. Okay, so come over here. Number eight. I feel like Cookie Monster. Okay, and come back to number nine which is the rearward driver's side one. Get it. Get it close, slow it down. Okay, I've got one more. It's the far rearward on the passenger side. All the way in the back. Can't wait to get down off this engine. I don't know about you. Getting close. All right. So we did all those. If you wanted to, you can go back around and do them a second time. It's not really specified to do so, so I'm not going to worry about it. Um, some people do, some people don't. It's your preference. So now we can move on to the next step. All right, so now we're gonna put in some wiring harnesses. You can start from the front and work your way back. Me personally, I like to work from the back, work my way front. That way there, everything's still in my mind, what I'm connecting in in the rear, and I'm not gonna just start with the front and get all excited that I'm almost all done and forget about this stuff out back. I don't wanna forget about anything. So here we go. We've got this lovely connector. We remember this guy. We're gonna call him Fred, or we can call him Torin. And uh, we're gonna get the little lock right here. We're just gonna start it in. This lock was our, this is what took the video an extra hour. So I'm just gonna get it started. Once I get this pressed in, I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze this lock up and in. If you wanted to, you could probably squeeze the lock up and in now, and then try to get it in, but let's not do that. Let's just get this in. The connectors back there, or the sensors back there, I have the connector in my hand, obviously. <laughs> so I'm just gonna bring it back. This should be facing backward, just like this. Not like this, it would be impossible to get the lock out in that way and it definitely won't go back in. So, the lock faces back. We're gonna get our hand back there. We're gonna find the sensor in the back. We're gonna kinda do this. We're gonna hold onto the sensor. We're gonna do this, pull this up and in. We're gonna listen for the little click. And then we're gonna feel around. We're gonna find this red lock the finger and lock it, okay? We don't want this falling off back there. It's gonna be interesting to try to find it again someday. So here we go. I'm just gonna get this back here. I'm gonna feel around. I'm going blind. Oh, I feel it. Oh, oh I'm losing my ladder. Typical, right? And I need a little bit more slack, so I'm gonna just pull this harness in further. If I can grab it. Come on, Len. If only there was a little bit more space. Good thing I don't have big hands. Oh, here we go. There it is. Yeah! I got the lock. Very nice. Give it a little wiggle. It's going nowhere. 
perfect. Okay, we've got our little, can you see that little security thing? This just kind of holds it secure. So there's a piton in the back, sticks out of the back of the intake. We're just gonna slide that over. That holds it secure so the harness can't wobble around too much, get caught on anything. We're gonna connect this one in. It's this big one. It's not this one, can't reach, okay? We'll use the big one. No lock, keep that in mind. Ready? Click, I heard it. Give it a little wiggle. That's not coming off. We're just gonna come right down the line now, okay? We got our fuel injector. The lock's on this side, facing forward. Clip it in, we got our red lock, push it down. We're gonna do that all the way down the line. We got it facing forward. Grab it, feels good. Once we get this in, we're gonna go over this other side. We're gonna start at the rear and work our way forward, okay? Double check, make sure there's nothing else unplugged over here. We can leave this off for now because we gotta do a little bit up here still. We'll, we'll worry about this in a minute, okay? We'll put it up even so we don't forget. That would be what we're gonna be dealing with up in the front. So now I'm gonna move over to the other side. So we have this connector. We didn't disconnect it, but we did disconnect it from the intake itself. The way that I did it is it just slid out. So for my instance, I'm gonna slide it back in. Listen for my click, lock it in. I'm just gonna look at it, analyze it. Okay. We're just gonna take a better look at it. Let's try spinning this around. I really don't think it goes that way though. <laughs> of course it does. Nice, all right. So now we're gonna go down the line. We're gonna plug in all of our fuel injectors. We got our little reds, those are all popped up. If they were squished in, you'd wanna just make sure that you use your small screwdriver, put them in the unlock position. Grab my flashlight. <clears throat> click, click, nice. Feeling around. And what else I might have unplugged over here. We got this, we remember this. We'll do this in a minute, okay? Let's continue with our connectors first. Another one, locks up, it's ready. In the unlocked position, click, click. Should be another one hiding out back here. Let's see if I can get my connector. Unlocked position. Click, click. Last one's up here somewhere. There it is. My hand under here. Click, click. Give it a little tug. Wonderful. Okay. Now we got a whole bunch of extra parts here. Just move that, right like that. While I'm back here, I can go ahead and connect in this fuel line if I want. I'm just gonna put it on, just like that. Actually, I'll pull it off and I'll show you something real quick. Okay, so this right here, the red, is a lock. That lock needs to go on the bottom side of this groove right here. It's kind of like a, an outward groove or whatever, call it what you want. Anyway, basically we wanna make sure we push this all the way down so that groove meets up with the plastic part right here and this lock is gonna come on the bottom side or the fuel rail side of it. We're gonna try to push this in like that. So from the bottom side, lifting up, we get our two prongs that we had squeezed to push out and in or out. Now I'm gonna take this one and that just locks those two prongs in the outward position. Give her a little tug. You're going nowhere. Perfect. All right, let's move along. Come over here. Take a peek. This looks good. We did all these, 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 these. Perfect. So we got our little spider web of goodies here. This we remember we had to bring it around this, right? That was the whole reason for it, disconnecting it. So I'm just gonna come back over it like that. I'm gonna get it over here. 
Yep, just like that. Now I can connect this in. This is a breather hose. This right here is your PCV valve. It's a very simple thing to change. You can check out our video on how to do that. I'm just gonna put this up and over, over this. Like that. It squeezes in. You wanna make sure it's bottomed out on there as good as it can get. You don't wanna leave it just a little bit on. If it wiggles its way off, well now you're gonna have a vacuum leak, okay? We don't want any vacuum leaks. That's what we just did all these gaskets and stuff for, didn't we? That feels good. We're gonna make our way down the line. We did not unplug any of these coils. This looks good. All right. Looks like we can start working on the forward part of this engine. Okay, friends, here we go. We got our little tangled web right here. A whole bunch of little miscellaneous connectors. We're gonna make sure that we get all these connected in where they go. They're all a little bit different, so you don't have to worry about saying, oh no, what if I switch them up? Well, you're not gonna switch them up. And I'm gonna help to make sure that we don't have to worry too much about it. I'm here for you. Just keep watching my videos, and I'm gonna keep showing you how, okay? So here we go. This little thing right here, we remember that this held our lines, right? These are our AC lines. These hold them secure so they're not moving around as the engine's shaking. The bottom side of this bracket right here, I'm gonna lift it up again so I can show you. We remember that this slides over that stud under there on the engine. So I'm gonna get that onto that stud on the engine, right like that, yeah. Now we've got this hole right here. That's gonna line up with that, for the bolt to go through that bracket. Very nice. So at this point, before I get too far into bolting, any, bolting anything down, sorry, I'm gonna get these lines in here so I know that they're ready to go. We don't have to necessarily latch it in until we can at least get this lined up. And that way there, we latch it in on the lines where it actually belongs, right? Okay, so. There we go, I got that stuff lined up. I can go ahead and latch this in if I want. Just like that, just clips right in. You can see the little hooky, all right? We used our pocket screwdriver to release it. If you had to do it again for some reason, we're just gonna go straight here, lift, release, okay? So there we go. We've got our mounting nut that goes on that stud down there where the bracket slid into. We've got our mounting bolt this is gonna go through this hole, through our bracket, and into the bracket on the intake. So we're just gonna start these in. We don't wanna tighten anything down yet. We also don't wanna forget to tighten anything down. So let's try to work our memory a little bit here. Okay, those are all on. We're gonna make sure we tighten those down. Do not forget, all right? But let's do a little bit of connect connection action here. We've got this piece right here. Remember this slid into the upper intake area. So I'm just gonna bring it up. I'm gonna get it where it belongs, making sure that I'm not tugging too much on any wires. Now that this is secured up here, it kind of gives us an inkling, inkling of where things are gonna go, right? Because this, this one right here, this one doesn't reach all the way up to there. It just reaches right here. This fits pretty good. Let's make sure it slides in. We've got our red lock. Okay, we already checked the connection. We made sure that it looked good. We're gonna listen for a click. Yeah, nice. That one fits great. Got these two little wires up here. This one goes right here. Click, click, little tug, feels good. Little tug, feels good, okay. We got this one. You can either bring it up over the top and in or under the bottom and in. I'm gonna go under the bottom, that way there it's protected by this bracket. Here's our lock, okay. So on this one, the lock goes on the back side or the underside, and the slot right there has a little prong. Click, I heard it, I feel it, feels good, feels good. We can go ahead and connect this if we want. Oh, looks like our lock went down. That's okay. We remember how to do this, right? We're just gonna squeeze these and lift it, okay? Do it again. Locks down, oh no. Squeeze them, lift it, unlocked. And look inside, make sure that there's no real big debris in there or anything. 
If it looks like your gaskets are no good in there, you can replace them or replace this line. It looks good for me. Go ahead and squeeze it in. Oh, once again, we got the little line here. It's raised. We want to make sure that this lock goes on the inside edge of that, not on the outside here. You don't want to just put it on like this and then lock it in. It needs to be all the way in. Squeeze it, lock it. The lock needs to be on this side, okay? Squeeze it in. Give it a little wiggle. There we are. For a tug, <clears throat> that's going nowhere. <laughs> Love it. All right, we are cranking. Great job, everybody. Let's keep rolling. We got a flow going here. This one right here, we're gonna wait on that. But if we wanted to, we can go ahead and put it right like this, onto here, yeah. This comes from the back side. Slides through. This is just a little breather. It goes down there, it doesn't connect to anything, just hangs out, all right? Now, before we forget, like we said, we wanna make sure we tighten these two up. There's no torque specification for them, so use your best judgment. You know, you don't need to use a three foot pry bar or anything like that and try to really get them cranked down or a long ratchet. You can just go ahead and use a regular ratchet. Same thing we used to remove it. I'm gonna come under using a 13 millimeter socket. I'm gonna get it bottomed out and give it just a little bit more. That feels pretty good. All we want to make sure is that we know in our minds that that will not loosen up again on its own, okay? This one right here might be a little bit harder to get to. If you wanted to, you could use an extension. I'll see if I have one available. Maybe I could try this one. Looks a little short. I wish I had a longer one here. I do have one, just not on me. But I'm gonna give this one a try. I'm gonna come in. I'm using a wobble extension or a couple of them. It just gives me a little bit of an angle, so that's kind of nice. If you were torquing something, you would want to not use a wobble extension if you had another option. It takes away from the torque. So I'm just going to get this on there. There we are. Feels good. This right here is a rubber mount. It's made to be able to move around a little bit. So as the engine's rocking and moving, it doesn't necessarily take these AC lines and rock and move them all around, right? Every time you rev this engine, vroom, vroom, it's going to shake around. The motor mounts are going to do the best they can to keep it still. It's a lot of horsepower in this puppy. It's still gonna do some rocking. We wanna make sure that these lines aren't getting ripped back and forth because they connect over here, right? You can see that it connects right here to the body. So if this thing was yanking and it yanked on this, you're gonna have issues. So here we go. We've got another electrical connector. What are we gonna do with this one? Well, this one's gonna go to the intake right here, okay? So now that we've got everything all put together, an exception of maybe just this right here, we're gonna continue. We're gonna make sure that we double check every single thing, right? Let's just take another look. If you have another minute, pause this video, take a look. Make sure that we did not miss anything going around the whole engine. There's nothing else on the back side that we missed, right? There's nothing along the front here, or along the side, I should say. We didn't miss a fuel injector. We checked all those. Gotta double click on each one, click in, and then lock. Same thing over here, click and lock. Sounds good. We got our fuel plugged in. Got all our hoses like this. We got this one right here. This is gonna come up. Remember, good thing we checked, right? This right here goes to where? I don't know. Yeah, right here. We took it off. We're gonna put it back on. This is why we double check everything. It's easy to miss something. Human error. We're only human. We're not dogs. We're not that good, right? All right, so we got this stuff right here. We remember this went to the alternator. We can keep this set aside. This went to the air inlet hose. We'll keep this set aside. Tightened everything up. Come along the front side. Everything feels like it's locked in nice and tight. All right, let's move along. So we've got our alternator out, right? We're gonna get ready to install it coming soon. What I wanna do is these are where the mounting bolts came through, right here and right here. This is the nut side, okay? What I wanna do is I wanna take these bushings, I'm gonna spray them with a little bit of penetrant between the bushing and the alternator itself, both of them. Once I do that, I'm gonna take my punch, 
I'm gonna go like this, and I'm gonna take my hammer, I'm gonna bonk it. I wanna try to push these through a little bit. I don't wanna go all the way out. That's not what I'm going for. I'd like to at least get them pushed maybe a little bit closer to flush with the alternator. I'm gonna do the same to both. That way there, when we go over the bracket that's on the engine, this will be able to slide over nice and easy. Right now, it's basically already pre-pressed in to where it's gonna be up against, so it's gonna make it very difficult to get this in and lined up. You're gonna end up whacking the alternator with a hammer, try to get it banged down. This is just an easy step. It's gonna save you a little bit of aggravation down the line, especially during install. See if I can get a little bit of this to actually spray out. There we go, a little bit there. And you get some spray, and you get some spray. I'm just kidding. All right. I'm gonna keep moving my cart across the room. I'm just gonna take my brass punch. You don't wanna use something metal, like something super hard, because if you peen this over, you might have a hard time getting your bolt through it, all right? I just went with a brass punch. You can use whatever you've got. I'm just gonna whack it down. Easy peasy, right? I didn't try to knock it all the way out. You probably could. Don't bother, don't waste your time. It's not what it's about. Do this one, turn it over. Okay, that feels good. Now this is ready for an install. If you wanted to, you can give it a check, give it a spin, listen for any funny noises. You hear something in there, you might want to replace it. You know, if you hear a rattling, maybe whoever uh, put it together, or maybe something came apart, you know, something's in there. But anyway, this spins good. I don't hear any whining or grinding or anything like that. So let's go ahead and install this. Um, all right, so now it's time to go ahead and start getting ready to install our alternator, right? What we want to do is we're just going to double check. We're going to make sure that this is clean. If you want to, you can take a little bit of sandpaper or whatever you might have, rough it up. The other side, make sure it's clean. There's no rust, corrosion, anything. We'll double check in here. Looks nice and shiny. I can see some metal prongs. That's great. That's where it's going to make the electrical connection. If you saw rust, you'd have to do something about it. It's a project for another video, okay? So, I got these all pushed in, right there. You're gonna see what this does. When I come down and in, hopefully, there we are. It's gonna slide right over this bracket, nice and easy. I'm gonna move this out of the way a little bit. See how easy that slid over the bracket? If I left those pins out, and I didn't drive them back, then this would have had a much harder time. You probably would have been banging and hitting and cussing and just, it would have been a nightmare. So you're welcome, I showed you how to do that. So here we go. I got this down here, moves around nice and free. I'm gonna grab my two bolts. We remember they're both the same, so you can mix them up, play a little trick on your buddies, whatever you wanna do. Anyway, they're both the same, whatever. Here we go. Slide it through. I'm just gonna try to start it in. Just like everything else we've done so far, we have not tightened anything until we got the rest of the bolts that are part of that one unit in at the same time. Basically, if I tighten this up now, before I put this in, I might not be able to move the alternator around. And if this hole isn't exactly lined up, I'm gonna go bing, 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 bing. Why? Grab this. Get my hand in there, hopefully. Lift the alternator, I can do that. Get my hand back out. Okay, I'm just gonna try to get it started. I'm gonna try to use a ratchet. This will help me get in here a little bit easier. It's gonna be a 15 millimeter, you can grab that. And come under here. go it's going in nice I already have this one started so while I'm on this bolt if I want to I can just go ahead and tighten it right down what this is gonna do is it's gonna pull the nut side of the bushing in and through and it's gonna compress it up against this bracket right here so you'll have a nice secure alternator okay. now there's no real torque specification for this so we're just gonna bottom it out and then just give it a little bit more and then just a little bit more, okay? We don't need to keep going after this. If you wanted to, you could use a little bit of thread locker. That's your preference. For the purpose of this video, I'm not gonna worry about it. Just 
Give our alternator a shake. That feels great. All right. Now we're clear to start connecting some stuff here. Now we'll run our belt. So we've got our connectors. I'm gonna feel around. There's only two, so we really shouldn't have too much of a problem. If we do, well, then we got bigger problems, right? Anyway, I'm gonna get this in. That bottomed out, okay? I've got my, my nut with a 13 millimeter. Come right here. Get that down by hand. I'm gonna snug it right up. Just grab my tool. Put it on my ratchet. Now for this, I don't want any real pressure. So I'm not gonna use my long handled ratchet and go all the way down at the end because even though it doesn't feel like I'm really pulling very hard, I have a lot of leverage here. With enough leverage, theoretically, you could probably move the world. So I'm just gonna grab it up close. That feels pretty good, okay? You can give it a little bit more if you want. We don't wanna go too much because that will break off internally inside your alternator and then you're gonna be watching the video of how to replace this again, or you can probably just remember because it's fairly basic. We're gonna take our little electrical connector cover. We're gonna bring it around back. Drop it down there where we can barely find it, but I'm gonna pull it up anyway. There we are. Click that in. Move these out of your way so you can see. We've got this right here. And listen for a click, okay? There it is. We got our lock. Click, click, tug, tug, feels good. Push that over. We've got one more electrical connector. This goes up here, like we said before. Here we are. So now let's grab our serpentine belt and we're gonna put that on there. We should be good to go to keep moving. We've got our serpentine belt, new or old, whatever you're using. We're gonna go back over the fan first. Remember we had to take it off over the fan. Now we're gonna go back over the fan first before we start running on any pulleys, okay? So I'm just gonna take it, see what I can do about getting it over all the way around. There we are. So now we're into the pulley area, okay? The whole belt's out of the fan shroud. We don't have to worry about it getting caught. We were very careful not to get our fingers caught in there. So now we need to try to think back to the way that we took this off. If you didn't draw a picture, take a picture, whatever, just watch this video and I'm gonna show you how to do it, okay? So I'm gonna go over the, I'm gonna go over the fan pulley first. So we know that it goes over that. I'm gonna take this and bring it over the tensioner and then back and over the crank. It's gonna be hard to reach. Very hard to reach because I'm short. I'm gonna climb up. Okay. Get my hand down in here. Being very careful not to cut myself. Safety first. I'm gonna bring it up and over this pulley. <clears throat> Fell off that, that's okay. It's gonna happen, it's gonna keep falling off. You're just gonna keep putting it back on, okay? Keep your patience. Okay. We have it approximately where we know it needs to go. I'm just gonna double check where it's riding on the pulleys. You wanna make sure it's sitting inside all the grooves on all of your pulleys. Like I said, it's gonna keep falling off. That's okay, if you don't mind. It's just part of it. It's part of the fun, right? Put this up on here, Put this up on here. Now I'm gonna grab my tool and then we're gonna make pressure with it or relieve pressure, I guess, of the tensioner. And then we're gonna get our belt over the last pulley. All right, so we got our belts kind of laying over all our pulleys here. We got it, for the most part, inside all the grooves. We're gonna recheck it, but right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our left hand, we're gonna take this part of the belt and try to put it around this side of the smooth pulley. It's gonna be difficult. We're gonna need to push down on our serpentine belt tool or ratchet, whatever you're using, to relieve pressure from the tensioner. And then we're gonna try to work the belt from the, along the outside of this and then over that. Okay, so the back side of the belt, it's gonna go on the smooth side of this pulley. Here we go. Good luck to you, good luck to me. Let's do it. Push down, 
have this built. Okay. I'm just gonna take a peek while I have the tension released. Looks pretty good. I'm gonna come up nice and slow. You don't wanna let that tensioner slap back, okay? I'm gonna try to get my tool off of there completely. There it is. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and connect in this hose. It just goes right back here with the male end. Then you get the rubber side, that goes over to your air filter. So all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to wiggle it, slide it in, perfect. This just lays across the top of your engine and it's gonna come out through the slot that's inside the, um, the cover that we're gonna be putting on in a second, okay? So I'll just set it here for now and we can maneuver it whichever way it has to go. I'll grab my cover. Get it up on here, just take a look at it. Nice and beautiful. We'll look over here. We've got two prongs, okay? And two rubbers. The prongs go into the rubbers that are on the top of the intake in the back there. And these two rubbers that are on the cover, one goes here on this prong, one goes over here on this prong, okay? We've got this right here, this comes up through here. So it makes it pretty easy to figure out where it goes. On the top side, You'll notice there's a couple of arrows. These are so you can shoot a bull. Come right in. We're gonna come in from the top at an angle. We're gonna aim those arrows directly at those two rubbers back there. Try to work this in. Give it a little push if we need to. I'm gonna look underneath. I'm gonna grab this, get it up where we need it. Okay. Now as we come down, we wanna be trying to feel as we push. There's two rubbers that are up in here, right? They need to go onto those prongs. We should feel it kind of like latch in a little bit. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. So we got this lined up. We still got our rag in here. We'll get our connector out of the way, bring it back up here so we don't forget about it under there, and whatever. Now we'll move on to putting on the intake. Okay, so here we go. Now I'm gonna take this out. We're just gonna take a double peek in there. Make sure nothing fell in there. There was no nuts, bolts, acorns, extra debris. You don't want to push on that butterfly, see if you can see inside there. There's nothing pretty in there to look at. Just don't push on it, okay? We're just cleaning around it. Now what I want to do, I'm going to take my nice beautiful air filter that I took out. I'm going to put it back in, okay? Should just go into the box. I'll come around here in a second. Clip out of the way. Nice, that looks great. Perfect, okay. We've got our air filter housing. We've got our connector right here. That goes to here, right? This goes onto there. This goes onto there. These go over these prongs. So here we go. Put it up on there. I'm gonna make sure that it bottoms all the way out. I'm not gonna tighten this clamp yet. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna get everything else situated, then I'm gonna tighten the clamp, and then I'm gonna do this. We're gonna do the electrical connector last. As we're shaking things around, we don't wanna give this any tugs. To do this air filter box, to put it back in, we're gonna need to lift this part right here up, this part down, scoop it in over these nubs, okay? Once you make sure you get all those in, and they are, I'm gonna push down with all my might. Not really all my might, but some of my might. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna lock down all these clips right here. There's four of them, one, two, three, four. Sometimes the ones on the side can be very difficult, especially when you're coming from this angle. This one's the hardest. You'll have to bear with me. Okay, we've got this right here. Just slides right on. I'm just gonna give this a little wiggle. That's the whole box moving inside the rubbers, so that's good. It's supposed to do that a little bit. But we wanna make sure that this part of the box does not lift up. If it lifts up, you probably missed your slots. If you don't get it in the slots, it's not gonna make a good seal. You're gonna be sucking dirty air past the air filter, so the air filter is gonna be useless. It's gonna come up in here and it's gonna ruin basically everything we just did underneath there, okay? 
So now I'm going to come back around the front side of the engine. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tighten up that clamp. I'm going to use an 8 millimeter with an extension and a quarter inch ratchet. You can also use a flathead screwdriver. Flathead might slip a little bit. You're probably not going to get it very tight. I would just go with an 8 millimeter, save yourself the hassle. Now we're going to take our little, electri little electrical connector and plug it in there, okay? So I've got my little 8 millimeter. Got a swivel extension or a swivel on my extension with my quarter inch ratchet. We don't need very much leverage. We're not going all the way out here with a nice long ratchet. We're just going to snug up this clamp so we can't move the hose. The hose is all the way down. We confirm. You can get at this however you want to. You might not even need to use an extension and a swivel and all that stuff. This is just my preference. You do you, boo-boo. Okay, you get this snug. Feels like it's getting snug. Just give it a little bit more. Should be pretty good. I'm gonna grab it, wiggle it. If you can grab it, wiggle it, and it pops right off, you know, put it back down. Tighten it up a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna take this. Oh, by the way, if you tighten up that clamp too much and you feel it strip out, bonk, bonk, and all of a sudden it's not tightening anymore, you need to replace that clamp. You can get them anywhere, but you need to replace the clamp. This needs to be tight. You do not want any dirty air getting past your air filter, getting sucked into your engine, okay? So here we go. Clamp, click. There's no lock on that one. Give her a tug. We'll just double check all of our electrical wires here. Make sure nothing's flopping around. It can't get into the serpentine belt. We didn't leave any tools under here. We'll check all up along the cowl. I still got some stuff, but that's, you know, I'm not there yet, but that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna double check everything now, okay? So now it's time to reconnect the battery. We removed the negative battery terminal to start our process. So now to end the process, we're gonna connect the negative battery terminal. If you happen to see your battery terminals corroded, or if they look like they have a film of any sort on it, you can go ahead and use a tool that looks like this. This would be for cleaning the battery side. If you had a wire brush or something, you could try to clean inside there. Basically what it comes down to is making a good connection between the battery terminal and the terminal end, okay? This one's in decent shape, so I don't have to worry about it, but if I did, I would just do this, woo, do that a whole bunch of times, make it nice and pretty take off my cover, take my little wire brush, woo, do that a bunch of times, make it nice and pretty, okay? We're not gonna worry about it. I just wanted to make sure that I let you know about that. If it is gunked up, dirty, corroded, doesn't look great, like it's gonna make a good connection, just go ahead and clean it up, okay? And if this one's bad, well, probably that one is too. It couldn't hurt to have this one off still, remove this one, clean that up, put it back on, and then go back to your negative. So here we go. We've got our 10 millimeter, We've got our 10 millimeter nut here. I'm just gonna get it kind of close so I don't have to ratchet for days. Remember what I said, when we go to make this connection, you might see and or hear a little arc or a spark. Don't be scared. Just connect it on, don't put it on, jump off. Put it on, jump off. Just one time, okay? You can do it. You're not gonna get electrocuted. It's not gonna you know, cause your brain damage or anything, hopefully. I don't think California knows that it will, so let's go. Here we go. I heard it. Got a little snippet. I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten this down. Should start feeling a little snug. As always, we'll give it a little wiggle. Feels great. Thanks for watching. Visit 1AAuto.com, your place for DIY auto repairs, for great parts, great service, and more content.